what's up YouTube? So did you ever wish that your laptop would actually give you the performance you paid for it as opposed to doing a dream job of being a barbecue girl? Well, we all do. Whether you're doing intensive tasks like video editing or gaming, or you just find in general your laptop gets way too hot way too often, the good news is that there are certain things we can do to help our laptops run a little cooler and thereby perform a little better. And in this video, I'm gonna share the top five things you can do to make that happen. As always guys, if you do enjoy this video, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, we got all sorts of awesome content right here. Thanks for watching. Let's get started. Contrary to its name, laptops really should not be used on your laps or any uneven surface for that matter. See, the thing with most modern day laptops is they of course have air intake vents. So the laptop basically intakes cool air and exhausts out hot air and keeps your machine running nice and cool. Unfortunately, these vents are often located directly beneath your laptop or sometimes towards either of the sides or sometimes even the rear side in the form of some sort of vent. Now, what happens is when you use this laptop on your laps or let's say on the bed, you often end up blocking or outright choking these air vents. That means that cool air is not going into your laptop, your laptop's heating up, and essentially you've got a nice fiery mess going on inside your machine. And when your laptop gets too hot, Obviously, it starts scaling back its performance to make sure that all the components A, don't get damaged by overheating and B, they're actually able to function as opposed to, you know, just malfunctioning and just dying out from overheating. One of the best ways to make sure your laptop gets plenty of air is to use it on a nice, cool, flat surface. So an ideal example, of course, would be a work desk like the one behind me. This, of course, makes sure the laptop has plenty of breathing space. If you do want to use your laptop on your laps, you absolutely can. One common trick is to just use a flat surface between your thighs, for example, and the actual laptop. You can use a nice flat book that's wide enough to seat the entire laptop or even a tray. But all in all, Avoid using a laptop on any sort of surface that's going to potentially block these vents. Number two, and this kind of serves as a natural extension for number one, is to get a cooling pad. Cooling pad is essentially a tray or a surface for your laptop, and beneath this surface you have additional cooling fans. These fans allow more air to enter your laptop and thereby cool it faster, making sure it runs at lower temperatures. Now the effectiveness of cooling pads can vary laptop to laptop depending on how much space there is for the air to enter in the first place. But in any case, the good thing about cooling pads is that they are relatively inexpensive. You can get cooling pads for as little as $15. Of course, quality will vary depending on how much you pay. And most cooling pads can be powered directly by your laptop using a USB cable, which is of course a great thing if you're trying to use your laptop independent of a power source. Number three. See, the thing with computers are that they also need air to basically keep them cool, like I mentioned earlier. But unfortunately, unlike humans, they don't have lungs and a nose to filter out all the dirt that's involved in the air, which basically means all the dust that's in your air basically gets sucked in by your computer. And over time, this dust starts building up within your computer. It starts clinging on to the components and eventually it gets so bad that it starts blocking the air vents, which you guessed it, ends up heating up your computer and causing lower performance over time. One of the best ways to prevent this or deal with it if you already have this problem is to simply buy what's known as a dust destroyer. Yes, that's what it's called. They also go by the name of compressed air canisters. And basically these little cans of air have pressurized air. The minute you spray it, it lets out a burst of air that in most cases is enough to remove most or all of the dirt that's stuck within your computer's vents. You should ideally be doing this once every couple of weeks, or in some cases, if there's less dust in your room, at least every couple of months months. Using this will most definitely make sure your laptop is running at the optimal settings and the optimal performance is designed to run on starting from day one. The fourth element, of course, is environment. And this one kind of affects the other three I mentioned. So it's very important to use your laptop in a particularly cool and dry setting, especially when you're doing tasks that involve a lot of processing power, like 4K video editing or playing video games. Often people will use their laptops in very humid settings or in a setting where there's already a lot of warm air, and then they wonder why their laptop isn't performing that well. Well, here's the thing. Your laptop can only intake the air that's available around it. 
So if the air is already very humid or very hot to begin with, well not hot but warm to begin with, it's definitely gonna be less efficient at cooling your laptop because again, there's less heat to be absorbed from the machine, which ultimately means you will get lower performance. Try using a laptop in a cooler environment and you'll definitely notice there is a visible change in performance, especially when you're really pushing your laptop to the limits. This is a true and tried technique. Try it for yourself and I guarantee you'll notice at least some level of difference in performance. Last but not least, and this is the only one that doesn't require physical intervention, rather it requires software management. So often on your computer, you have a bunch of background programs that are running. This happens because over time you install stuff and you forget about it, or in a lot of new computers, you just get a lot of bloatware that comes pre-installed that's just outright trash software. And a lot of these programs run in the background. You can give it a quick check to see which programs run in the background at startup by going on to task manager and just quickly going through your list. And you'll often find that there's a lot of programs programs that you probably never have even used or you don't use them anymore, you can uninstall them or in some cases you can just disable them using Task Manager under the startup option. It is worth noting that some programs to keep an eye out for is third-party antiviruses. They still in 2021 use a lot of system resources. The best antivirus and the one that uses the least system resources is actually free, believe it or not, and that's the one that comes pre-installed with most Windows computers. I'm talking about Windows Defender. Why pay for antivirus monthly when literally you don't have to spend a dime to get one of the best antiviruses that just comes pre-installed salt on your machine. Seriously, save yourself some money and let your computer run a little cooler. But again, this is a critical factor to keep in mind. The more software you have, the more bloated your computer runs, especially when you're doing a you know, demanding task where you want to keep your RAM as free as possible. Well, the less programs you have, the more system resources you have, and the better your machine can perform. I hope you guys found these tips to be helpful, and I hope they make a difference in the performance of your computer. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the content, hit that like button, and honestly, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm always doing my best to provide quality content for you guys. I'm always open to any feedback, any comments, questions, suggestions, concerns you might have. I'm all ears. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.